Excellent uh, work, uh, both of you guys. Okay, Steve Glashinsky, are you ready to go? Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Can Ladies you and gentlemen, uh, we'll turn the, turn the show over to Steve Glashinsky, everybody. So you guys can see that 70s show here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can. Okay, well, I started uh, taking pictures with an Instamatic in 1970 and then got a, a slide camera in 72 and uh, just went from there. So this is, uh, we're actually going to go up into 81 here. Um, but uh, this is just some stuff that I, when I was running around in the 70s, and uh, you see these people there that, you know, they're dressed up for the 70s show. And why isn't it going? And that's what I actually look like. And so the 70s show was no lie. The shirt there you see is very similar to what they were wearing in that 70s show and uh, dig that greasy hair when I had hair. So here we go. We're kind of going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, I've got about 15 minutes here. So this is the American, and I did it in uh, uh, PowerPoint so you guys can see uh, what each of these photos is. You can see the, the captions I wrote, hopefully. So this is crossing the Stone Arch Bridge, which of course today is a, a trail. That's the 4449. And uh, the uh, Great Northern Station in downtown Minneapolis with uh, BN. F7 and Amtrak units. My wife works at the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, which is now on this site. Uh, the train to Duluth was originally the Arrowhead. This is the southbound train crossing the Kettle River Bridge at Sandstone with an E unit and a couple great northern coaches. And uh, the SDP 40Fs were always one of my favorite locomotives. This is the North Coast Hiawatha leaving Minneapolis when there was only one tall building, the IDS building there you see. Um, now, now there are many, many tall buildings. Um, and this track right through here is just a spur now to get to the Star Tribune building. Uh, but there's no passenger service here, of course. Night at the Great Northern Station. This was like about 20 below zero. The train... Uh, from uh, Minneapolis to Duluth, the Arrowhead. This is arriving in Duluth. Uh, I'm up on a signal here. And as you can see, this was the day. See, notice the fireman is waving to me. He's not like calling 911 since there wasn't any 911 then, but he isn't calling the cops. He's actually saying, hey, good to see you there. Amtrak coming out of Tunnel City. This is the Hiawatha with an STP 40F. Again, the... Uh, now the train is called the North Star and has sleeping car service all the way from Chicago. You see the sleeper there. Uh, so you could ride a sleeper from Chicago all the way to Duluth. This is crossing the Nimaj River Bridge. This bridge is gone now. Uh, they moved in favor of the old former Sioux Line Bridge, which is a little bit to the, uh, to the north of this bridge. Uh, Burlington Northern now, again, in alphabetical order here. This is the uh, Hutchinson Local uh, crossing the bridge at Orono. Uh, this is a trail now also today. Uh, F45, this is uh, going past Mississippi Street Tower. The tower is long, long gone. Um, but this, this uh, track is still very busy. This is the BN BNSS main line through the Twin Cities, the old NP. It's the only shot I ever got of that tower. By the way, predominantly, this is going to be Minnesota, even though it's Midwest. We'll go to a couple other states. But of course, I grew up in Minnesota. So most of this will be Minnesota. SD24 on an ore train. Notice the B&O GP30 over there on a uh, Milwaukee Road intermodal train that's going to follow this guy out at Oakland Tower there, which, of course, the tower is long gone now. Out in Elk River. I was, I was a big F-unit fan, so you'll see a lot of F-unit photos here. Um, this is Burlington Northern Westbound 123. That was always a good train for F-units that ran from Minneapolis, uh, Northtown up to Grand Forks. This is going by the old uh, depot at Elk River with seven of them. And this is 157, uh, grabbing some orders at Central Avenue Tower there on his way west, all the way to Laurel, ultimately. This is train 132, which ran from Grand Forks, which was another big F unit stronghold for the Burlington Northern in the 70s. Uh, running south and went uh, to Wilmer, Minnesota. This is coming down the old Great Northern. 
uh, between uh, uh, Grand Forks and Fargo, which uh, is the route the Empire Builder uses. Train 123, this is running up uh, the Fertile Line, uh, which uh, took off near Manitoba Junction and went up to Crookston, and then they ran west into Grand Forks. Um, so this train went on different routes. Uh, 123 westbound went up through Fertile. The eastbound train came down in, on the Grand Forks line and then down into uh, Fargo and went east. Uh, another train, this is train 131, the Wilmer to Grand Forks train. This is uh, east of Breckenridge uh, on the, um, on the um, former Great Northern. Another day up in, uh, in Superior, this is Tower MJ where they crossed the Sioux Line, uh, the Sioux Line's line that went off to um, um, the Bruton Line, which went to Glenwood, uh, Bruton and Glenwood, Minnesota and also the line that went across the northern part of the state, the Plummer Line. Uh, jumping ahead to 1981, this is an eastbound train from Oaks to Breckenridge, to a pair of NW5s, uh, which was the regular power on this train that went from Oaks to Breckenridge. The 992 is the uh, now great, it was former Great Northern 192 and now is at the Lake Superior Museum, uh, or Lake Superior Railroad Museum in Duluth and runs today. Another set of F units on 132 crossing the Sioux line at Tinta. This is the train that ran from uh, Grand Forks down to Wilmer through via Breckenridge. Uh, crew change here at Devil's Lake, North Dakota between 127 and 128, the trains that uh, ran from uh, Minot to Superior. And then we followed 128 East. This is going by the old Great Northern Depot at Petersburg, North Dakota in 1981, so we're actually out of the 70s. Uh, the Canadian National ran RDC cars that ran from uh, uh, Thunder Bay to Winnipeg, and uh, they would go, cut through the Minnesota, the southern part of uh, to go south of Lake of the Woods. Um, and this is stopping at the um, CN Depot in Baudette, Minnesota. And running a little west, running west, uh, this is going by the old depot at Williams, Minnesota. And uh, the eastbound version of that train, this is stopped at the depot in Baudette, hoping for passengers of which there were none when I was there. I think they thought maybe I would ride it, but I did not. Uh, this is the same train uh, in Pinewood, Ontario, um, heading east. Notice the bicycles and the station. Station's long gone now. And back in those days, you had CN uh, freight trains that went uh, on that line south of Lake of the Woods. Notice the endless series of box cars there going all the way as far as you can see west of Baudette. Uh, meeting at, a couple of trains meeting at Roosevelt, Minnesota. You can notice the depot is in between the units there. So going to CP, this is the Canadian arriving at Thunder Bay, as you can see from my caption. In April, notice the snow is still on the ground, much like Minnesota. And heading west out of Thunder Bay. And the same day, the eastbound version number two arriving at Thunder Bay. Up in uh, Escanaba, this is the uh, Northwestern Roundhouse there with an FM. And uh, turning on the turntable there, all this is is long gone now, just an open area. Northwestern X, uh, X Great Western cross at the branch line at Cannon Falls, Minnesota. Uh, Cannon Falls is still served by Progressive Rail, but they, this bridge is gone. Um, and this train was heading across the, uh, the river there. The good old Northwestern Elko line across uh, South Dakota and Southern Minnesota. It's an eastbound train at Hetland with the C-425 slug sets. Always a fun chase of 482, ran out of Huron in the morning. This is uh, the servicing facility at East Minneapolis with an F unit get, getting some sand, I believe. And this facility is long gone. This is an industrial park now. Uh, the branch that went out to uh, Gary, South Dakota and Canby, this is the train coming back from Canby and Gary approaching uh, Tracy. Chased this train a couple of times. Night in New Ulm with some RS3s on the Alka line. 
Uh, local coming south out of Aberdeen, heading uh, south of Mansfield, South Dakota, pushing a plow along with the local freight. And uh, same day, different train, same line heading south of Aberdeen with two Alcos. F units, of course, on the Northwestern were another favorite. This is the old uh, MNCNL line at Hampton. Um, this line is gone now in favor of the Rock Island, which also goes through Hampton, which Northwestern moved over to. Up in uh, Upper Michigan, this is a ore train at Iron River. This is old Bob Anderson country, who I know Bob is up here today, is on the uh, call. Uh, this is a switch job. And for you Chicagoland folks, this is a commuter train at Richmond going under the Milwaukee Road there. In super extreme trespassing, this is uh, Chicago. And the railroad cop came out of the depot, out of, out of the Northwestern Station after me, but he was walking and so was I. So I just kept walking and I turned around and waved to him, went down to the street and he never got me. So Duluth and Northeastern, this is uh, their local heading up to Saginaw, which ran each morning out of uh, Cloquet up to Saginaw and back. Was a fun chase always. DM and I are heading south at Waldo, Minnesota. The smoke as he comes down grade towards two harbors and notice the uh, the uh, putt putt car there on the siding. This is up at Rainy Junction. This this is all abandoned now. Uh, the wooden caboose even into the 1970s. For a while, the DM and I are use these Alcos uh, set C 630s. Uh, XUP, they uh, used them for a while and then they went up to the Cartier. This is at Proctor. And climbing up, uh, notice it's September 21st, but it's already snowing. It's Minnesota. Um, coming up Proctor Hill there at the famous Spirit Mountain overpass with one of the Alcos as the second unit. Or train passing the uh, Saginaw Depot, the relatively new SG38. This depot's still standing, it's barely hanging on. It's abandoned, but it's still there. Booth Winnipeg and Pacific use RS 11s. This is a southbound train passing the depot at Gein, Minnesota. And there was a Ranger Tower up by Ray, Minnesota. This is a northbound train with five RS 11s heading north for shot from the Ranger Tower. And it was cold. Uh, in 1976, the museum in Duluth ran a trip up to Fort Francis. And uh, this is that train crossing the uh, Rainy River going into Fort Francis from uh, Rainier with an RS-11. And we all uh, loved Erie Mining Company. This is back in 1975, in the era when the F units still had yellow roofs for all you rivet counters there. So had yellow roofs, this is at Murphy City. And this is meeting the eastbound. The eastbound train has run up the Dunka River branch here to meet the westbound train. Then he'll back out and go continue east towards Taconite Harbor. Escanama Lake Superior, a railroad I worked for in 1980 after John Larkin bought them. This is an excursion train in 1973 at Turner, Michigan. And for a while, they used the shark noses. This is the shark nose leaving uh, Wells heading to Channing on the Channing job. And further west up at Turner, Michigan, passing an old ENLS coach there. And turning on the Y at Channing with some Milwaukee Road F units. Little did I know in a, in a few months, I'd end up being the agent at Channing for a while, for six months. An ENLS special uh, with an LS and I U boat at Sun to Michigan. Green Band Western, this is the yard, of course, at Norwood. Over in Kiwani, switching over by, not switching by the dock, but switching the uh, industry tracks over by the depot in Kiwani. And an RS2 pulling the local job from uh, Plover and heading back to Wisconsin Rapids. And a number two, west of Arcadia. His track is still there, but is no longer used by the CN west of Arcadia. Going by the old depot at Alma Center, which is long since gone. The Illinois Central Gulf come dropping down the grade into Dubuque. And coming out, out of the famous tunnel there at East Dubuque. Uh, Ian, or I'm sorry, uh, Sioux Line borrowed these LS and I units in the winter, ran an ore train uh, across the old DSSNA to 
Sault Ste. Marie, because of the bridge restriction at the Sioux, they only filled these hoppers half full with uh, taconite. That's going by the old DSS and a depot at Newberry. One of my favorite all time shots, this is the LS and I East End job uh, switching at Rumley. Notice the laundry is out, the gas station, and the dog on the porch, along with all the crew members. So that, that always was one of my favorite photos. LS and I leaving the Republic mine. Of course, this mine is, is uh, no longer in operation. And again, notice the guy is hanging out and waving. If you look close, this is uh, four Milwaukee Road Baldwins at South Minneapolis Yard. And Mike, I know I'm on the 15 minutes right now. I'm going to keep moving. Uh, the American Freedom Train pulling up the hill at uh, a short line hill in St. Paul. ABAF units, the 44 49 stalled on this hill. So they brought a set of F units to pull it up. Um, Milwaukee Road eastbound with a GP35 at Winona. Uh, the SW1s that were used in southern Minnesota on the branch lines there because of the light weight of the rail and bridges. This is a snowstorm at Preston, Minnesota. Notice the old steam locomotive bell on the SW1. Uh, a few months later, this is an eastbound train coming out of Austin. Shot with a telly. No, I'm not going to get run over. And about to cross under the Great Western overpass at Spring Valley with four of the SW1s. A uh, different branch that went from um, near Albert Lee up to St. Clair, um, very, uh, very rarely operated about twice a month. And just to show you how the difference with today and, and back then, um, I was in the dispatcher's office in Austin, Minnesota, sometime there in, the, in 1976 and 77. And I asked the dispatcher, if they ever run up that line to St. Clair, will you give me a call? And he said, sure. And he did. A couple of days before they ran, I got a call at home and he said, we're going to run. And so I went and chased it. Night at Mason City, Iowa, F unit and a GP20 rebuild. Coming down the streets of Bellevue, Iowa, favorite spot. This is at Specs Ferry, Iowa, uh, northbound train. They had set out a bad order boxcar uh, on a little siding there. And that's what I'm standing on top of to get this view with the two kids there. Notice the one kid has his ears plugged. Coming up at uh, Lansing, northbound. And in St. Paul with some little bit of ice on the F units. And Amasaw, this is before Amasaw, Michigan, before the NLS took over. And the last Milwaukee Road Jackson local that ran from Jackson, Minnesota to Madison, South Dakota, on the last day of 1980, the embargo day. MNNS, Minneapolis Northfield and Southern, notice there's the center cab, a BN train and some Sioux line F units there in the background, this is at Northtown. And a night shot that Bob Ball arranged for us, uh, who Bob is on here tonight, uh, they're at Glenwood Junction with the ST39 in the center cab. And the Sherman Mine up in northern Minnesota, some an Alco Colin Calf. Reserve Mining Company leaving, uh, leaving the mine at Babbitt with an SD9 in the front. The Rock Island passing the Minnesota Transfer Tower at Park Junction. And this is a train crossing the Robert Street Lift Bridge in St. Paul. The Royal American Shows train heading south at Faribault, Minnesota. Those of you who uh, buy books from John Lukey about uh, Minnesota railroads, that is John Lukey, if you can see my little arrow there. Uh, that is him taking a picture. I did not know him at the time. We didn't meet for a few years later. Over there for you Illinois folks and eastbound at Kelowna and an eastbound at Bureau. And a westbound out in Prairie Home, Nebraska, just a few days before the end of the Rock Island. The Sioux Line was always a favorite of mine. This is Cardigan Junction, which is about a mile from my house. Um, but of course, the depot is long gone, or, as are the F units. Uh, westbound local at Hamill, Minnesota, on the line out to uh, Glenwood, which is the main line of CP today, west of the Twin Cities. An eastbound with a plow on the front uh, on the 
Bruton line, this is all abandoned. Uh, snowplow extra heading west to Glenwood, March 75, clearing the main line. Once the main line was clear, this train with the two EP units was able to head east to Minneapolis. And here's the crew climbing on board. At Covington, Michigan on the old DSSNA. Uh, eastbound with, I, I totally lucked into the RS-27s, the Dolly sisters, never left the Twin Cities except in 79. There was a big power shortage and they ran out to Glenwood a few times. And I just happened to be there one day in Glenwood. They were running east, had no internet, of course, then. Just stumbled into it. Night in Gladstone, Michigan, with the F units. I was a big fan of Sioux Line F units, you can tell. ABA set in uh, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, not but again, about two miles from my house where I live now. F unit killers, the GP 38s. This is going by the depot at Hawkins. Weyerhauser, Wisconsin, eastbound. This is uh, 1981 now, we jumped ahead. This is the chief, uh, the car ferry that went over to St. Ignace, from St. Ignace over to Mackinac City. There it is. This was the, one of the last, well, the last steam powered car ferry on the Great Lakes. Unfortunately, it was scrapped, cut down to a barge. This is Detroit, Detroit and Mackinac, Mackinac City coming up to switch the chief. And here they are switching the chief. South Shore at Gary, and we're almost done, Mike. Coming down the streets of Michigan City. The abandoned same platforms of the St. Paul Union Depot, um, which of course has been revived now. And a DM and I are northbound at Alborn. And I believe that is all folks, that's all. Awesome uh, presentation there, Steve. Um, round of applause for Mr. Glushinsky. I went over, it's 20, 22 minutes, sorry. <laughs> well, you know what we do, I should have gotten the cane. Uh, wonderful, Any anybody uh, have any comments or questions for Mr. Glushinsky? Uh, I have one comment. He was commenting about the, uh, the wood body, the caboose still running around in 1971. I was talking with an old guy who worked on the Reading, and during the winter, they preferred the wood cabooses to the steel cabooses because the wood cabooses were warmer, wood being a better insulator. Interesting. Well, I know the Sioux line used them as well, right? You know, right into the 70s. So I think the DM and I are in the Sioux around here were the two that really used them a lot. And they certainly went through uh, colder winters than anyone uh, <laughs> used to experience on the old Reading Company. Yeah. Very true. Anything else for Steve before we move on? I love those uh, shots with the covered wagons and plowing snow, blasting snow. Those, those are great, Steve. Thank you, thank to, you, 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 you had to suffer to get those, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Awesome. Um, folks who are not yet members of the Wisconsin chapter of the National Railway Historical Society, why don't you take a moment to go to our website right now, www.nrhswis.org, and click on the Join tab and see how simple it is to become Wait, a member of our again? chapter www.nrhswis.org. And um, one, uh, one reminder, our next online event is a joint meeting that we're doing with the Northwestern Illinois chapter on Saturday, Mar May 8th. Saturday, May 8th, a uh, presentation of photographs from um, the godfather john jebco uh so we're looking forward to that for a couple reasons first of all it's our first event that we're doing with our with our neighbors in uh, in illinois uh so we're, we're really excited about uh working together with them and extremely excited to uh to see john jebco's photography so that's may 8th you'll find information on on that 
at uh, www.nrhswis.org.